and I was, you know, I was, I was nervous. And so I tried to be poised and, and whatnot, but I went up to Mr. Jackson and I must have said something to him about um, thanking him for his time to, that he was about to spend to, to speak with me. And he stops and he says, well, isn't this your time too? Hello and welcome to Beyond Networking, the show where we help you build a sustainable career in an unpredictable world. We believe if you learn to weave a network of people who trust you, who feel heard, understood, and valued in your presence, there will always be someone willing to hire you, buy from you, or work with you. On this show, we feature intimate conversations with legends and leaders of industries about the relationships, connections, and chance encounters that form the foundation of success. Remember to subscribe for world-class insights on how to build a life and career that you are proud of. And join our community at beyondnetworkingpodcast.com. All right, that's it for me. Now it's time to go beyond networking with this week's guest, Matt Zinman. All right, Matt, thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Brian. It's great to be with you. Yeah, for sure. So so let's start at the place I always like to start, which is if you're just meeting someone for the first time, and these days that might be virtually, but in a different in a different time, in a different past, in a different future, it was out there in the real world. Uh, if you're just meeting someone for the first time and they ask, what do you do? What's your answer these days? I, at this very moment, would say I've just authored a book called Zism's Insights to Live By. It's a personal development book. And then my day job is running a nonprofit called the Internship Institute, where we set up internships for employers. Great. Okay. So, so those are two very different things. So you've been running this Internship Institute for a long time, right? Yeah, about 15 years. Wow, 15 years. That's that's amazing. So I want to dig into that a lot. Before we get there, though, let, let me ask. So now you've got a book. So you've been an author. Uh, and uh, is this your first book? It is. Congratulations. Thank that's, you. Uh, that's, if, you don't that's... Count, if you don't count the internship books, which are more <laughs> the workbooks and stuff, I'm just going to, you know, this has an ISBN number. So I'm just going to, yes. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I, I all I can say to that is I, I vividly remember the that smile that you have on your face right now that the book is actually done, um, having gone through. For me, it took three years to write my first book, and I swore that my second one would take less time. It would be easier because I'd already gone through it. I'm already a year and a half to the sec into the second one. It's amazing how hard it is to write a book. So exactly. congratulations on it's that. It's a relief. I don't know if it's a smile. It's kind of like behind <laughs> this is the, the pain of it. <laughs> well said. But it's, it's, pain, it's pain worth it's pain. going through, though. So- so where do you feel most at home these days when you're thinking about the nonprofit work with the Internship Institute? Do you now see yourself as a writer? Or like for me, when I finished my first book, I did not start seeing myself as a writer. I saw the writing process as a necessary evil to get my stuff out in that medium. Where, where are you with that? Right. Well, some of it is uh, priority. Some of it's circumstantial. Right, so there's not a lot of internships happening right now. For example, I am doing quite a bit of trainings on virtual internships, which is something I've done for some time. Uh, so some employers, some of the associations are looking to me for that. But for the most part, I can only do one thing well at a time, if, if you know your limits. So the book is really, my, um, is really my priority right now. And I'm just enjoying the opportunity, like now being with you and, and being on the podcast and and just having the opportunity to make an impact, you know, aside from the book, you know, with the, with the nonprofit, as I'm sure, you know, you're aware through your experience, it's a lot of kicking and scratching. There's nothing easy about making that kind of impact, although there's a lot to show for it. Uh, in this case, it's, you know, it's immediate and uh, I'm, I'm having a blast. That's great. So let's dig into the book then a little bit and I, i'm going to come back because i really want to explore the internship institute i'm i'm because yeah. you know you and i had had a brief call um about a month ago when we kind of first met and, and it's a little unusual for for me and my my listeners will know that usually i bring on guests that i've had a long relationship with that at some point i met in the real world or met with a chance encounter um but but for us it was it was it 
you reached out to me pretty much cold uh, via, I think it was LinkedIn. Yeah. And, um, and you just, you had this background of this internship thing that I just never heard of before. So I was curious and we talked and uh, just agreed a month ago that, yeah, this, this would be a great conversation for, for especially for the times. So I want right. to come back to that, but let's talk then about the book. So you've got, it. this is a book of it's a personal success book. It's got advice and insights for sure. a successful life. I mean, give me the who's it for, what's it for? Right. Well, you know, I will say that while they do sound like different things to your point, they're not mutually exclusive. There's a lot of my experience uh, in, you know, in the career field that's, that's built into the book, uh, you know, for your audience's purposes. I love talking about all of the, the career work and um, focusing on that to whatever degree you love. You know, where the, where the book is concerned, it, it's really broken out in, in a few different ways. It starts out with self-discovery and mindset uh, around concepts like earned confidence. Um, and, we, and we could, again, talk to that. I'm just going to give you the skim version. And then we get into personal interactions and relationships. And that then builds up to uh, mindfulness and things like swimming with the current, and having some fun around making coincidences matter, amplifying gratitude and the law of attraction. Uh, something called inevitability, which gets into, um, you know, for entrepreneurs in terms of, of achieving, uh, you know, defining and achieving their, their why. But ultimately, I'm, I'm looking for it to be actionable uh, in terms of a practical, uh, there's a life enrichment action plan. So if someone's looking for a personal development framework, or maybe just want to do a tune up or just, you know, do it a la carte, you know, there's all those different options uh, as an outcome of the book and, and the goal for it to make a, a positive impact. Yeah, so you're looking to make a positive impact impact for people, uh, both internally for themselves and also for the way that they put themselves out into the world. I I'd love to explore this earned confidence. That was one of my uh, the things that when we first spoke, when we first met, I was really curious about. So, what does that mean? So uh, it, it's chapter one, and it's it's really at the foundation, and the book does build up on it, and it's referred to throughout. Earned confidence is something that we all have. Have, have gained through our life experience, wherever we are, you know, young or, or otherwise, we've all been through, you know, whatever ringer, right, whatever that is to us, and we're still standing, and uh, it, we're going to take on and, and deal with whatever's happening now, and we're going to deal with whatever's coming at us in the future, so it's very easy for people to lose sight of that and get caught up in worrying and, and being anxious and stressing over things that aren't certain to happen, and there's just a lot of unnecessary negativity where that's built in and assumptions come into play. And, and so a lot of it has to do with being present where gratitude folds into that and, uh, and, and staying, staying grounded, as I said. So, so give me an example then of, of earned confidence. Let's, let's say, is this what you mean where, you know, I, I spent 15 years as a, as a, or 10 years as a full-time professional magician before I made a career pivot for the last five or six, but where at some point in my career as a magician, I had earned the, I mean, is this internal? Is it external? Is it the way I see myself? Is it the way other people see me? Where is this? I, I think it's really more, you know, when people think of confidence overall, they often think of the, some of the things that you're talking about through their career or proving themselves professionally or, or to others. Earned confidence is really a lot about proving yourself to yourself mm -hmm. that, uh, again, uh, you know, for example, you know, babies aren't born warriors. You know, worry is uh, a, a learned trait that you have to unlearn. And so uh, in, in this example where we're rooting yourself in earned confidence, that can sometimes happen uh, subconsciously. You don't might realize till afterwards you're feeling this way. You're not sure why, or you're just a quote worrier and accept that of yourself. Uh, and and you have to break that habit. So when you worry about something and it doesn't happen, you know the 2020 moment. That's when you have to stop and look back and be, well, what did I do to myself? You know what what negativity did I allow unnecessarily? But also, what did I do to others? Because we have a personal responsibility uh, and, and where the book builds up, we're talking about energy transfer, right? We affect each other. And so even in just that behavior, worrying about something unnecessarily, you know, friends are there to lean on, of course, for things that are, you know, when you're dealing with the real, but when you're dealing with things that aren't, uh, you yeah, know, that's just, uh, that's just not good for anybody. So 
where does that fit into the the moment that we're having right now where the world came to kind of a standstill in 2020 this you know i hate to use that word unprecedented because i'm getting a little tired of seeing it um but but you know this unprecedented moment where just everybody in every culture and every corner of the planet not that we're all in the exact same situation right i do like the analogy of we're all in the same storm but we're all in different boats right i mean there's a lot right. of people in them in a much crappier boat than I'm in. Um, and then there's people in much nicer boats than I'm in too, right? Um, but where does this earn confidence uh, help somebody right now um, in the midst of just this complete chaos and and tension and anxiety? Sure. So I would refer, you know, I'll, I'll refer to earn confidence as one of several filters in terms of how we experience day-to-day -day life. So here we're, you're really talking about rooting in the present, which is to say, I don't have to get caught up in all these other things that aren't happening. And there's plenty happening right now uh, to, to deal with and, you know, not to minimize it. There, you know, there's some real life challenges for a lot of people across the spectrum, uh, you know, for obvious reasons. And whether it's career or, or having to go through, you know, difficult times personally or, or just financially, you know, we we might not even have the answers and that's okay too. Right. I mean, we've, we're survivors, right? So we always find a way through. And when it comes to things like mood health, for example, which I think is a, another big issue for what you're talking about, because you're right, we're all out of our routines and we're, uh, you know, there's an, you know, change doesn't come easy to anybody. Right. So how do you, how do you create some structure? But if only, I mean, anyone can attest any given day, you're like, the sun is out or, or, you know, it's raining on me, you're going to have a very different perspective on things. And then there's perception itself. And so, uh, and all these things roll, you know, fold in together. So for the fact that we have all of these moving parts, we forget that everything that we encounter, whether we're staying present or we're not in the best mood at any particular time or, or day, or maybe we're depressed for, you know, clinically even, uh, for the challenges that we're facing, that we are interpreting and assuming things that we encounter as the truth. Mm. And it's still just an interpretation. So part of that is I've got to give myself the benefit of the doubt. I'm being hard on myself about something, or I'm making an assumption, I'm letting that run with me, or I said something to somebody and I think lesser of myself, but it's not a certain thing that, right? You're not certain. So that's part of the earned confidence part uh, uh, as well. And then giving others the benefit of the doubt in, in interactions. So um, no, that's, that's the short answer there. That just reminds me of one of my all-time favorite quotes, and I'm almost positive at some point one or two seasons ago I mentioned this, but I'll, I'll say it again, which is we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are, right? Right. Right. And that so often we can put all those insecurities and anxieties that we have in our own head, we put that on other people, uh, we put that on situations, and uh, it's really coming from from inside of us. And, it's, and, and, and do you think a lot of that is coming from um, an insecurity, a lack of self-confidence, uh, an unwillingness to, to recognize you have earned uh, some level of confidence? We, I mean, where is that coming from? Well, I think that in, in one part, it, it can be in, in the given moment, right? We might be more in touch with um, our own confidence and, and, and our gratitude and, and being present uh, at one time in a day. And then another, mm. you know, you're having some certain encounter. And remember, we're talking about energy transfer here. Okay, let's not minimize that because we do affect each other and it can be a real blind spot. You know, someone's coming at you a certain way or you're not really processing it as well, but you know, they're, you know, they're the ones having a bad day, but you know, now it's kind of, you know, transferring on you. So you really just have to stay grounded uh, and, and recognize that, uh, you know, when you're in that moment to, you know, this is practice, right? Just like anything else. And you have to fold it into your day. And I, I will still come back to gratitude as, as a fuel for that. And, Again, you know, it's easy for any given day to get away from us and you blink and it's like, you know, what happened? You have to create triggers like when you put your feet on the floor in the morning, you know, just take a moment mm. to experience that. Or, you know, we have some fun around things like uh, catching 11-11 on the clock. Well, you know, mm -hmm. okay, good. Stop what you're doing and just 
So you have to, if you do those kinds of things, you set alerts on your, on your phone four times a day to take one minute just to be grounded and, and, and root back into this. Those are the, the little things, those little habits that you can do um, or making your phone be your taskmaster in that, in that uh, example that really go a long way in helping you, um, you know, stay in, 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 that, in that earned confidence mode. I uh, I love that gratitude as an active practice, and that, that I, I everybody should could go back and re-listen to that last minute there because I think there's there's something that that y- you talk about very easily. Um, I've learned over time, and so now I talk about easily in a way that I never used to be able to. But this idea that you can actually practice gratitude, and it's not just something that that happens that just happens to you like. It doesn't have to just be something that happens to you randomly or it hit you like a wave out of nowhere where now I feel gratitude. Like those moments are great, but you can choose, like you said, to literally set an alarm and go, I'm going to practice gratitude at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. and 10 p.m. every day for one minute. And it's amazing that like you keep talking about energy transfer that you can't you not only can you transfer, not only do you transfer energy all the time to other people and they to you, but you can actually like transfer energy back into yourself in a different way, which is fascinating. Um, I want to take this idea of energy transfer and shift a little bit to, uh, to the, the moment, right? The virtual world where now we went from, we were already heading as a, as a planet in the direction of virtual becoming at some point overtaking, right, our our in-person experiences. But I think most of us, even those of us who thought that world was coming quickly, I thought it was 10 years away, right? And then this moment kind of slammed us into it as almost a trial run out of nowhere. Like, what would it be like if we actually lived in the matrix, right? Like, if every interaction we had- Is that where we we are right now? I do kind of wonder- It feels like it, doesn't it? Right, yeah. Um, Where every single interaction that we have with another human uh, for the last- two months here in the States anyway, uh, has been virtual, um, un- unless you're ignoring all of the things you're supposed to be doing, in which case stop that and start doing the things you're supposed to be doing, right? So right. so my question here is, how do you then make those meaningful connections in a virtual world? How do you transfer energy in a positive way? Or, or and maybe you want to start here, is it more difficult to have those energy transfers in a virtual world, where are we with that? Hmm. That's a great selection of questions there. You know, I think that it it comes back to you know, the same thing we were just talking about in terms of having to be proactive in creating structure and practicing things, right? And it also goes into, and I don't want to overlook mood health because that's really important to me. Um, and, and as just a brief aside, as you know, I, I have some personal disclosures in the book and I've had to contend with depression myself since my teens. And so that really has, you know, that's something that I have to build into my day in the same way. Um, Like if I have a down day and then I have another down day, like that third day, right? There's some things I need to do that answer the question that, that you've just posed. A a lot of which is you have to create structure for yourself. Um, Not give yourself a choice, right? You have to be your, your own parent in this regard and you have to reach out. And, and be proactive, right? And, and I, I've had some, some great experiences that I would not have had otherwise, you know, in, in adapting here, uh, getting in touch with college friends. Um, yes, there've been some virtual happy hours and things like that, uh, that, uh, that, that we get planned, right? But those things don't happen by themselves. Looking at the opportunity for personal development around, you know, who's your tribe? Who are the people in your inner circle that you can forge a deeper relationship with? Or maybe there's a few people who are just been beyond your inner circle that now you can be proactive and reach out to and you know, the people who will lift you up. And, and again, that lifting you up is so critical here. Um, but, but you're right, the pendulum has swung completely the other way. And uh, like I started my entrepreneurial endeavors in uh, 2002, right? Bricks and mortar versus virtual. Right? Mm. And now we're completely opposite. And, um, you know, you walk outside and people, 
you know, I'm in Philadelphia, so maybe it's just kind of a, an East Coast thing. But, you know, if you get like someone to kind of lift their head and be like, you know, how you doing? You know, that's like a big thing. Now it's like waving, like, hey, like another human being, you know, like we're all in search of that connection. And unfortunately, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a, an expert on some of the psychology and sociology aspects of, you know, not hugging and, you know, all the things that we're sure. used to doing and needing. But we have to find ways to, to compensate and stay connected and stay structured and, um, and then turn these difficulties into opportunities. Sure. So, okay. So you, you may not be an expert in, in the psychology and, and all that stuff. And, and appreciate you saying that, by the way, there's a lot of people who will just start talking about that stuff, just their opinion, um, based on their own experience without, without clarifying. And there's nothing wrong with people's opinions, right? Great. I love to hear everybody's opinions, but without actually clarifying that there are people who study this stuff and they have a different, uh, point of view on this. So appreciate that. Uh, cause also obviously I am not, and have never claimed to be, um, an expert in, in any of those things. My, my whole career doing this is built on my personal experiences and my background and my career as well. Um, so, Let's then pivot into, right, the Internship Institute, because I think this is where the crossover really happens here is where you are an expert, if anybody could be called an expert in anything, is is in the world of internships, because there's very few people who've really ever studied or um, experienced that world to the depth and for the amount of time that you have, right? So where would you say right now, Um, because not all internships are gone. A lot of them are gone, but not all internships are gone. And students who are graduating this week, right, in May of 2020, and my little sister is one of them. I got a big age gap. My little sister graduated last week. She got to graduate virtually by watching a 30-minute live stream. It was, right, very strange after four years of hard work. Um, So she's interviewing for jobs virtually, and so many students are. So... What would you say then, what kind of advice maybe would you give somebody based on your experience with the internship world and organizations about interviewing and going through the job search process virtually? Is it, is this actually better? Does it level the playing field in a way or did it actually make the inequities even worse? You're really good at asking complex questions, <laughs> but you don't but, have to give a complex answer. <laughs> no, you know, um, I, I definitely, this is very close to, um, you know, my heart and uh, a, a lot of experience. You're, you're right. I mean, uh, in, in being in this space and most, most jobs in, in my understanding, I don't know the exact st- statistic are uh, gotten through networking. Uh, as opposed to you know throwing whatever you can against the wall for every internet uh, you know job description you find you know and writing personalized cover letters that maybe never are read, and there's a technique that I learned over the years that puts the control back into the hands of the job seeker, and this is not just for college students. This is for I mean I work in the internship space also with military vets in transition. Mm. And certainly, you know, those in, in just uh, a transition now, and this certainly, a, you know, look at the numbers, right? The, you know, the unemployment claims don't, uh, don't lie, right? There's a lot of people in this situation and may or may not be aware of the, the informational interview. So I would like to spend a number, a, a couple minutes maybe on this. And the, the technique really does start with LinkedIn, right? You, I'm, I'm obviously a proponent of LinkedIn. That's how you and I met. Um, from a professional world standpoint, I mean, whoever's not on there, right? I mean, who's not on LinkedIn, you know, in the professional setting, right? These, this is how you're going to find the right people. This is how you get control over creating your own um, uh, career and destiny and life by choice, as opposed to by chance. You know, who is, and, and the power isn't all, all, always in the hands of the, of the uh, employer either, right? This is this, everyone's life here. So what are you interested in doing and what kind of exploration do you want to do as, as you know, challenging as it may be, you know, you got to pay the bills too here. Right. But the informational interview is really about reaching out to another human being. And uh, it would be in the industry or someone who's well networked 
Um, of course, this particularly works better for college students and, and, and veterans, although it's really not something that's often done, and just ask to have a conversation. And the point is not to bait and switch. You have to come in authentically. You're not looking like, oh, here's my resume. This is my real, you know, and you know what? It might not be the right person or position or company for you either. So, you know, what are you trying to get out of this? Um, in the ideal situation, let's say that you are that, uh, that college student and you reach out and uh, I'm just going to get more specific just so it's, uh, you know, brought a little bit more to life. Sure. My, my first career was public relations and marketing. So I worked in the agency space for a while. So let's say that you're, you know, professional services type business. I'll reach out to the head of a, um, of an agency um, or, you know, someone in the, in, you know, the upper ranks of management and say, I'm interested in, I'm not sure if I'm interested in agency or government PR or maybe going in nonprofit or working for a company. Can I, you know, spend 15 minutes with you, ask you, you know, what's it like working in an agency, right? Those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And a few things can come of that, right? You've taken that step. Now you can, um, and again, I, I know we're talking virtual world here, so I have to, I have to mix the, the, you know, the non-virtual and the virtual. But let's say that you are on site and that time is coming and you are, uh, or, or not yet, and you say, well, when your office is reopened or now it's open, can I come in and a uh, job shadow? Like, are you really, and do it genuinely. Like, you really are interested in this company. You've now forged a connection and are genuinely interested in this relationship. Because why, why, why do it otherwise after that first step? Or if you get there, it's not for you. Maybe they can um, be a, a continual contact for you. Maybe they can recommend other people, right? Obviously, this is some networking 101. But in terms of this technique, now you're job shadowing. And let's say you go through that half day and you um, hear something about a project or some research or you know, you're, you're keeping your ear open for something that you can volunteer to do afterwards uh, in turn. You know, you're not interning yet. But hey, can I, I really like this. This is great. Can I go research that? Whatever that is, volunteer to do it and then knock it out of the park. And then after you do that, you're a step closer. Now you've earned the internship or the job um, or just the respect for them to feel better about recommending you to somebody. That, that doesn't take a lot of effort. And you know, if, if you do reach out and someone doesn't get back to you or you do reach out and they say no, it's their loss. You're, you know, you got to value yourself here too. Yeah. So I do have a couple, um, so you hear where I'm going with this. And I do have yeah. a couple sites that are public service of the nonprofit. Um, if I may mention one is yeah. studentsteps.org. And there's what, another, what was, what uh, was that one more time? Sure. Thank you. Studentsteps.org. Yeah. And the other is vetsteps.org. And they're similar sites. The veteran site has some exclusive resources, but basically it takes you through this and there are free downloads there with sample questions you'd ask in an informational interview, literally what you plug and play in an, you know, a LinkedIn introduction just to make it as easy as possible. And um, just keep doing that and, and you'll find your way to where you belong, even if you don't know it right now. This is great. So I, I mean, I rarely get something, we, we deal with a lot of mindset, most podcasts do, right? We deal with a lot of mindset and a lot of top level stuff, but I rarely get something that's really as specific, detailed, action oriented as, as what you just laid out there. I hope everybody's able to listen to that like over and over and over again. That is some of the right. the most practical, actionable advice you could get right now for building a sustainable career in an increasingly unpredictable world. Um, and, and I... I love that I used to recommend and still recommend a uh, along the similar lines of that, not nearly as um, heavy as what you just described, but just to get on the radar of those kind of people. Um, somebody had recommended this to me when I was younger, and now I recommend it to everybody else, which is you can reach out to the kind of people that would normally be impossible to get to and and basically say, I'm writing an article for whatever on the top 10 pieces of advice from, you know, or pieces of advice or insights from top HR professionals or top CEOs in the marketing yeah. space or whatever. And it's amazing how the people who could be worth millions of dollars and you could never get to otherwise, if you're asking them for a piece of insight to go into an article that lists them among like the 10 top people in their space, they'll give you and what they'll give you their time. And what's funny about that is I know like it's not just a trick. Like you're actually going to write the article and you're going to put it right. out there. Exactly. And that is something you're genuinely going to do. But what's amazing is even though I know the quote trick of doing that, I've had people do it to me 
and it still works, even though I know what they're doing. I've had people reach out to me and say, hey, I'm writing an article, I'm making a YouTube video, whatever, on, you know, uh, insights from, um, you know, top uh, speakers in whatever space, you know, are you willing to give me a 10 minutes of your time to, to chat? And even though I know they're doing that, I still say yes. You can't right. help it because well, because it's, you know you yeah. respect the initiative that they're taking. Right? Absolutely, who, who, who does that? Right. I talk about the informational interview quite a bit, and then I'll talk to professors. No one never calls me with that. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. you know, you have to follow through, and that's also the challenge on the college front too. And you know, there's a whole soapbox there, but the students mm-hmm. are, uh, you know, not told to do this, and not necessarily guided to do this. And there's no placement for the most part at the, the colleges and universities, so it's very random. And, uh, and these are people's lives, right? You just paid a hundred grand and went into debt for a degree. All right. I'm on the soapbox. Yeah, no, that's okay. Like I like, like, this is a soapbox that's worth being on right now though, because so, so, um, many of my listeners are in the, um, career center space. Uh, cause those are a lot of the folks that, that, that book me to come in to, to speak to their students and work with them. And what I see when I go in there is by and large, really really passionate people who work in that space, who really care about their students, right. who aren't given, who aren't always given the resources to actually execute. Right. And sometimes they get really creative and that's how they end up reaching out to people like me who have like an entertainment background. Like, can you come in and help us get this message we're trying to get across, but do it in a fun way. And and so l- let me ask you this sure. then. What I know you have a lot of experience working kind of with and in tandem with those those sorts of, of yeah. uh, um, programs on college campuses. What are some of the biggest misconceptions that you think students end up with over the course of their college career about about career building? Right. What are the misconceptions students end up with maybe by accident? Right. Um, yeah. About building a career. Well, for one, I want to reinforce what you said is a gross understatement. The. Um, Career centers are completely under resourced for the most part, unless it's a, you know, a built-in situation like a co-op school, which is a, a rarity. Um, they and often the career centers are under student services and, and seen as overhead instead of under academic affairs. Um, there's just not enough of them go around, and the students aren't necessarily um, told that they have. There's no there, there's no requirement for them to go in there. So a lot of the career centers are just trying to get the students to participate. That's the big thing. But on these fairs, will they come? Will they come? You know, the majority of the students don't come. I do know these statistics from, uh, you know, those who are listening who, you know, from NACE, uh, you know, there's, they just don't have a lot of resources. And I know a lot of very dedicated career center professionals and, and they do great work for what they do, but there's, there's just more than what they can. So the misconceptions around students, for one, is uh, I, I think that they think that they they know more than they do. Maybe there's a, and and they don't necessarily rely on the career center to the degree that they ought to, because some of that is a lot about practice, interviewing skills and things, and getting put through those mock uh, those mock opportunities, Go, the career pathway, you know, type things. The vast my, you know vast majority of students never go to the career center once. I so, don't think I went to the career center once in my entire four years at college. I don't right. think I even know if I think back on the campus. I don't even think I know where it is if I had to go tell you where where that was. And I, and I, I got lucky because I came from a, a family and a background, and I had people in my life. I was building a career as a magician outside of college, so I was in a different track and learning that stuff on the fly building a business, but the, I was in the minority, right? Most most college students are not building a business in tandem with being a student. And even I, thinking back with how much I needed to learn how to pitch clients, which is similar to interviewing skills and stuff like that, I could have used, I, I, I probably could have exploded my career five years faster than I did out of college as a magician if I had been able to take advantage of that. And my school has the resource. Like I went to a school that has, I I have no doubt that the career center people that are from my campus, like that are listening to this, that are still connected with me, are they have their head in their hands right now, just going, how did someone like Brian not know that we were here? But I think that happens all the time, right? It does. And I, I, I think there's, you know, there's a, there's some rooted issues here. One is that students that are coming out of K through 12 are conditioned to test 
Uh, they're not necessarily, con- you know, it's all about GPA and, and, you know, for the ratings for the schools. And of course, GPA is important for getting into college and it's important for maintaining, you know, through it and to get a job. But no one really tells them to switch gears. Um, and the professors, uh, the faculty, and look, no two schools do anything the same way. So blanket right. statements here aren't necessarily fair. But by and large, um, the professors are there to teach the courses they teach. There's not necessarily a lot of support around, certainly not placement for internships for one. That's that's mm-hmm. left to the student. And again, they're not necessarily getting the support to do it. So it's very random. But the other thing is actually work skills. You know, the, the actual things like um, critical thinking, emotional intelligence, um, interpersonal communication, right? Those things are built into some classes that students take, but it's never provided in a formal way. Now, never is a straw, actually never is not a fair word. I think schools are getting better because of some of the pressures around academic, you know, credit bearing internships and things like that, where they're doing uh, prep courses and, but they're, you know, they're still just trying to find their way around how to set these things up and put the students through the soft skills. Uh, and, and the pressure has to do with admissions because the parents and the students who come into school want to know, are you right? What is your percentage of kids to get a job and, you know, so on and so forth. So I think some of it is catching up, but um, the, the shortcomings are still um, greater than they ought to be. Yeah. And that, that, that's one of my, my, the things I find most frustrating about not and not just obviously college and career centers, but the working world in general in in the states and similar countries, which is the emphasis placed on hard skills over, quote, soft skills, when in right. fact, soft skills, interpersonal intelligence, emotional intelligence, um, communi- just straightforward communication, perspective taking, empathy, uh, This is the work. This is why people get hired. It's why top performers stay on. It's why the best organizations are always the best organizations because they've built, they're in the minority of organizations that have built themselves around those, quote, soft skills. Um, And I think to your point, there's a few types of classes and majors that you'll learn that you'll more, you're more likely to pick up those skills in, but rarely is it really taught and it's it's silly because it it can be taught because to your point way earlier in this conversation babies aren't born with the ability to do perspective taking they're not born with the ability to to uh do critical thinking they're not that this is all this is taught this is learned and um so yeah i think you and i could go on that soapbox for another three hours i'm i might have to pull uh uh, put a pin in it but you got one more thing on that i I do i i think that uh you know, there's a gray zone here too because the liberal arts schools and give them a shout out you know that's kind of how they're built is to is to develop those kinds of skills to a certain degree especially around critical thinking and things uh, but then the employers aren't necessarily looking to a generic liberal arts degree to hire and the employers are greatly at fault here uh, as well in terms of their lack of training and it's ultimately their responsibility to have their employees be what they need them to be. And those training programs aren't in place either. So there's huge gaps um, across the, if only we could solve it, right? These, these are the behemoth um, systemic issues that um, I'm not sure how to solve quite honestly offhand. Um, but but, you know, yeah. but the, the one thing we can say about that, because uh, so LinkedIn does a skills gap analysis every year. And for the last three or four years, every year uh, interpersonal communication is at the t- is either one, two, three, or five. Like it's in the top five. Uh, it was one like two years ago. It was the number one skills gap in America, and which was what that means is the number one thing hiring managers are desperately looking for in their applicants and cannot find is people, people who are good at people, which is just something it's, it's amazing to imagine that you can get to be 25, 30, 35 interviewing for a job and not have any skills with dealing with other people. But so on one hand, it's not being taught. And on the other hand, most organizations aren't prioritizing it, even though it's the thing they need most when they actually get surveyed. Right. You know, and and there actually is a solution. And uh, I'm going to sound parental here, unfortunately. (laughs) Um, It's up to the individual um, Mm -hmm. to take self-responsibility, because these are some of the things that you have to learn that you're not being taught. It's not coming to you. You have to go and seek these opportunities out. And look, you know, since since O2, and then through my whole internship uh, career, if you will, uh, you know, no substitute for experience. That's the tagline I've had. And 
uh, you have to go and get it. Uh, it's, it's, it's just not something that's going to happen by itself. And, and that's, that's where the being conditioned to test and not telling the students they have to switch gears out of getting good grades to start and get work experience to really prepare themselves. That's the gap that really needs to be filled, but it still has to come down to the individual. And, and so exactly to, to that point, we, you, you could complain forever that it wasn't taught, that you were whatever. You can complain that organizations aren't prioritizing it. But at the end of the day, you know, it is actually the thing that leads to getting hired, right? That's what intervie- interviewing is not a science. People claim it's a science. It is just not. People interview based, they, they hire based on a feeling. That is how they, this has been studied so many times. No matter how much we are convinced we're making rational decisions, we're not, right? Our rational decisions are almost always retroactive, just justifications we do in our head to emotional impulses. And so people who make others feel heard, understood, and valued, who who are, are empathetic and good communicators, those are the ones who get hired. They're the ones who get raises. They're the ones who get uh, uh, better careers. And so if it's not being taught you can choose to take it upon yourself to work out these skills, to learn and to practice and just get better at them over time. Um, so I, I want to I want to ask you directly now the question that everybody has to answer on this uh, on this show. This is the whole core theme of the show, of course, which is all about chance encounters. And we've been dancing around that the entire conversation, really. But uh, Matt, do you have a story? of a chance encounter that had a big impact on your life personally or professionally to, uh, to share with us? I do. I do. I just want to say I was getting pretty hot there. I've been inner oming my way out of that conversation. So that was a good, <laughs> that was a good transition. Yeah. You know, it was re- the, the, this is something that has had just a, such a profound effect on me. Um, I was, I was at my first professional conference and uh, again, I started in public relations and, you know, you get that feeling, you know, kind of a little lost puppy, right? Trying to, you know, what is all this networking? I mean, it was intimidating for anybody uh, at, at that point in, in a first time. And I went to uh, one of the main lectures at the conference. This guy had a great reputation. His name was uh, Patrick J. Jackson Jr. And, uh, you, know, he, you know, he followed through on, on his billing. He, you know, was standing room only. Uh, he was extremely, um, I mean, I couldn't tell you exactly the topic he talked to now. We're talking 30 years ago, but, uh, you know, just to say how profound it is, right, to talk about it to this day. And so afterwards, uh, for whatever reason, I decided to do the meet and greet and, and go and, and talk to him. And, you know, I'm three or four people back in, in line. And um, that was like that moment I, I was un- unexpectedly, like my heart started pounding. You know, like, I don't know if I ever experienced, like, I don't know if I'd been pulled over by a police officer at that point in my, in my driving life, but that's the feeling, right? So as, as you're getting closer, uh, it, it just, it just got more pronounced and I was, you know, I was, I was nervous. And so I tried to be poised and, and whatnot, but I went up to Mr. Jackson and I must've said something to him about, um, thanking him for his time to, that he was about to spend to, to speak with me. And he stops and he says, well, isn't this your time too? Hmm. I was like, uh, yeah. And so I acknowledge, you know, that this is also, you know, my time and his time. And he says, well, I don't see why my time is more important than yours. What's your, what's your question? And I just was blown away. I mean, I, I it honestly, um, shakes me to this day. And, and I've been, I've been, I've been paying that forward, you know, with, um, with a lot of, with a lot of uh, heartfelt joy, knowing that how that made me feel to be able to say that to, to, uh, to other people who, who might be valuing themselves less than me in some way. I mean, you know, why is anybody more important than anybody else? And he, you know, had that humility and, um, and, and grace about him that, uh, um, you know, I, I, I wish I could tell him he had uh, that much of an impact on me, but um, I'm happy to share it here. That's such a good line. It's such a good point. It's such a good um, life philosophy, a mindset. Um, I, yeah, that's so interesting. It 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 makes me think of all the times that I've reached out to quote important people, 
and they've agreed like to come on my podcast or to have a conversation or to give me, you know, five minutes to ask them a question or whatever. And how, you know, the instinct is to go, thank you so much. I know how busy you are. Thank you, Mr. Important Person for your time. And how I can, I can literally think of probably only one person ever who made me feel, who, who was that important and made me feel like I was equally important. Um, and uh, and he's, you know, become a, a, a hero and a mentor and, and someone that's stayed in right. my life for, you know. Right, um, and it's so profound, right, to, yeah. to your question. It's also a good reminder to go back to the informational interview and remind yeah. yourself that, you know, whoever it is you're asking for time, of course you respect them and you have, you know, you're grateful for them saying uh, yes to, and, and respect the fact that they say no for whatever reason that is and not take it personally. But if it's an ego thing, um, then that's their ego. It doesn't mean that yours has to take the hit. So it's just about self-respect in that moment. And, you know, that was an early lesson I, I you know, have to, to thank Pat for. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thank you for sharing <laughs> that. So we're going to bring this on into uh, towards, towards the end here. Um, I've been on this track for the last year, year and a half or so about the role of luck in success. And you, you, you brought something up earlier and I had to bite my tongue from, from, from getting into this part of the conversation. Um, I don't mean bite my tongue in terms okay, of what I disagree I with you. Yeah. I <laughs> no, no, no. I, I just realized as I said that, that that was really not the right phrase. Um, I had to hold off from diving into this part of the conversation because I didn't want to derail what we were talking about then. Sure. But you brought up the fact that there are these things that you can do to instead of just waiting, hoping that the right opportunity will come along, that you can actually take control of your own life, your destiny, I think you said. Sure. And so first, straightforward, just this is basically a yes or no question. Do you believe in luck? No. Why? Um, I, I define luck in 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 different ways. I mean, what you're talking about and is you know, it's a decision. Be, I think you're probably referring to my saying something on the lines of living life by choice, not chance, yes. or designing your life, yeah. you know, living life by design. And it's a conscious decision. It's a conscious action, right? And, that, and that's where that, that action comes in. So when we're talking about things, I think you're coming down to some values here. Mm -hmm. So it might ask the question, well, do you live to work or do you work to live? Right? What's important to you? Um, those are some of the things at the foundation of of this question. And then in defining it differently, I really lean more toward energy. I lean more toward gratitude. I do believe in the law of attraction. I do believe that what we expect tends to happen. I think worrying is one of the worst things you could possibly do for yourself in that regard um, or in, in impacting others. And that that energy uh, transfer is, is what makes things happen. I find the more I root myself in gratitude, the more that I, um, you know, fold that into my day and, and try and stay consistent. And it's hard, really hard um, in the way that life happens and, you know, tail wags the dog, right? All those kinds yeah. of things. But to just try and take care of myself and stay in the flow, you know, I start finding things like more co coincidences happen, right? That's kind of where luck starts. You think, mm -hmm. oh, it was luck. No, I think it's more about somewhat of what you're putting out there, some of what you're open to, some of what you expect in that regard, but it, it's all still an intentional um, occurrence. And because it's intentional, that for me knocks luck out of the equation because I, I think luck is, is not seen as intentional. Mm. Great. You've had one of the, you're one of the only people who's ever answered no to that question. That's why I, I had a, a look of curiosity to see where you were going to go with that. Very cool. Thanks. All right. So let's bring this on into the the actual final question I usually ask. And before we do that, Matt, uh, where should we go find you? Where should folks who who want to know more about you or your work, um, right. your book, obviously, and, and we'll have all the links that you're about to say in the show notes so people don't have to memorize anything. Perfect. Well, um, the the book is uh, Z-isms, Insights to Live By. Again, it's it's not, although I have an affinity for the Z, you know, my, that whole thing with my last name. It's really more about those insights everybody has. And um, all I hope for is that someone would find the front end of the book and the free part of it and then start reading it and decide if you want to keep reading on. So you'll find that on Amazon. 
the uh, the reviews, I'm just really grateful, have been very favorable. And um, I, I, I do have a website in the show notes, which is z-isms.com. So there's, there's that and there's some free resources there too. So I think that pretty well covers it. Great. And uh, would you like people to connect with you on LinkedIn if they want to? Should I have that link uh, down there for them? Yeah, you can do LinkedIn, um, do, uh, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. I'm trying to get better at the social media. I'm in my 50s now, so I, <laughs> I miss the cut. So I'm, I'm kind of in remedial um, social media right now to, to, yeah. to get better at it. So sure. Cool. Cool. Okay. So uh, normally at this point, I would ask for one piece of advice for young professionals looking to build a sustainable career, but that was basically the entirety of our conversation. So I'm not going to ask you that directly. I think you'd just end up reiterating something we've already talked about, unless you've got something really pithy and perfect that you want to leave us with. Otherwise, I'll ask I, you a final question. I, I think it just goes to what we just said about 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 designing your own you know, luck in that, in that way. Right. It, it's yeah. not going to happen necessarily by itself and, and just be proactive and take control and, and that right. feeling of helplessness, right. Of like, I'm sending another resume. I'll never hear. No, go, go, go get it. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Then in that case, this is a new question that only started being my final question as of the uh, 2020 pandemic, which is what are you most grateful for today? Just that uh, everything, you know, my, my, my basic needs is, are all met and, and everybody's healthy. Great. And after that, everything's secondary. Great. All right, Matt, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate your time, of course. And uh, I just, this, this is fantastic. I, uh, I hope everybody got a lot of value out of this. I think there's, there's no reason everybody shouldn't have. Thank you so much for having me, Brian. I, I really appreciate it. I loved this conversation. It was so down to earth and practical that it's hard to choose the best bits to highlight, but I'll try. So here are a few of my favorite takeaways. First, you've been through a lot. Nobody's life is perfect. Very few people's lives are easy. Whatever you've been through, you're still here. You're still standing. That's earned confidence and it's time to lean into it. Second, if you're a student or a young professional, there's a good chance you think you know more than you do. That's not a knock, insult, or criticism. It's a blind spot we all have when we're young and inexperienced. You don't know what you don't know. The most successful young people are those who admit and embrace their ignorance, seeking out mentors, conversations, and opportunities to learn more and improve beyond the scope of the classroom or their workplace training. And finally, your time is just as valuable as anyone else's. No matter how important someone seems, it doesn't give them the right to disrespect your time. We've all got the same amount per day, and when it's gone, it's gone. Treat your own time with as much respect as anyone else's, and don't let anyone else treat yours as if it's worth less. Connect with Matt by clicking the appropriate links in the show notes or on beyondnetworkingpodcast.com. Shout out to the couple of folks who recently left five-star reviews on Apple. Y'all made my day. Thank you for that. That said, my name is Brian Miller. This is Beyond Networking, and we'll see you soon.